Hi everybody, welcome back to Intermediate Digital Painting. So uh, this is something I've been dying to get into in this class right now as we move forward here, and that is getting into working in atmospheric perspective, creating small little miniature comps, and developing some really nice compositions from those, and working forward. So there's a couple things we're going to talk about in the next couple classes, but today I wanted to start talking about part of our thumbnail process and how we create thumbnails. And I want to give you guys a couple basic steps to follow and I will update the blog with these steps so that way um, this will be like our thumbnail step that way you guys can sort of all complete this together we're going to have 40 thumbnails are going to do be due by not Thursday but by Tuesday's class okay so 40 um, and I'm going to show you a couple approaches to those thumbnails how I create them and then how I can go back and work on top of them and develop them to pick some really fantastic compositions Okay, so give me just a second here. First, I want to show you the blog that I've updated here. Okay, and we'll talk about this a little bit more on Thursday about the value transfers of working in atmospheric perspective. Okay, and then <coughs> what we'll do is we'll start taking a look. I found some really cool samples online. Unfortunately, um, I realized a bunch of the stuff I have is all from studio uh, jobs and projects that have non disclosure agreements. And if I show it, I can't put it up on YouTube. So I just grabbed some free stuff that was available online because I thought it was good work. And it's also a good example of what you guys should be doing as artists too. Especially with this class where we're focusing on tone, what we really get to do now, now that we covered the basics about lighting and we covered artificial light, natural light, and how light and shadows work, now we could really jump into creating our own pieces. And from the rest of the semester, we're really going to drop it in the second and third year and move forward at a much faster pace trying to get some comps done. Okay, so what I did is I, I came up here and I put a couple variations of some things. I came across some really fantastic thumbnails online. I got some from DeviantArt and from Google and I thought this would be a great example. This is what we want to work towards right here. Okay, so come some of the common threads we're going to talk about. Okay, and I, I'll post this up on a new posting for you. But as we do our thumbnails, okay, there's basically five basic principles I want you to master. I might even have to give you a quiz on these just to make sure everyone's learning them. Okay, step number one, this is all common sense here. Step number one in our thumbnails, since we're working in an atmospheric perspective, we're going to have gradation taking place. So we're always going to be having dark to light receding back. So every one of these thumbnails that you're looking at here are going to have dark to light. When you get a little bit more experienced with lighting and composition, there are times when you could change this dictating on the direction of where the light's coming from and we could flip it and work in the opposite direction. That's a little bit more advanced. We'll talk about that later. But for right now, our five areas that I want you guys to address. Number one, dark to light transition. Okay. Number two, shape, meaning variation of shape and overlapping of shape. For example, if we come in this piece right here, look at this thumbnail. See the shape in the foreground right here? And then see the shape in the midground, and then see it further in the back. By having shape overlap each other, that's an instant visual way and read to establish scale and to establish atmospheric perspective in terms of uh, gradations and transitions from dark to light. Okay. Uh, the next item is scale. Okay. So when we talk about scale, we're talking about defining scale inside a piece, and there's a couple different ways that we can do that. One is we can include the height of somebody. Another way is we can have items appear from larger to smaller as a receding back. And another thing that we can do is we can get in and we could have, um, for example, having a road transition back or having a set of mountain ranges get mountain ranges get smaller as they recede back. That's another example of scale. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to establish in our thumbnails some form of light direction that gives us an idea or sensibility where light might be coming from. And there's a couple ways we can do that. And the next thing that I like to talk about is sort of the last finishing phase of detail, which is pushing and pulling your values, going over your thumbnail comps to create sort of, you know, a, a finished feel of what's happening. None of your comps are going to be perfect. You're going to have to go back over them, define them, and when we're pushing and pulling shapes, a lot of times that's adding more elements in the foreground, in the midground, or maybe adding clouds in. It's pushing and pulling and coming up with some other samples from there. Okay, so those are five basics for us to start with. Now I want to go in here, talk about what we have updated on the blog. <coughs> really fantastic practice that you can do 
is to lay, take a look at master's works and copy them in black and white tonal studies, okay? Um, I found some really great examples of that. Here's a study right here. Here's Jerome, okay, who's a wonderful painter, okay, has a great sense of, co great color sensibilities. And even if the works in color translate it into black and white, and then go over and do comps, do tonal comps to figure out how the composition's working, okay? So I put a couple samples up here for you <coughs> of samples that artists have done before in the past, and then I sort of jump forward to this, right? Um, part of our assignment that we're going to work on, if we scroll back up to the very beginning here, let me hit escape here, is we're going to be doing a set of 40 thumbnails, okay? We're creating uh, environments and atmospheric perspective, we're going to be using ground plains, hills, or mountains to establish depth. Each piece must have either a robot, building, castle, or ship in it. The reason why I've called for those four special areas, those are items that are going to allow us to establish and set scale. Those are items that can overlap each other. Okay, So uh, we'll get back to that in a minute, and then we're going to talk about the thumbnails. Uh, under the step one, I'll put down those five little areas that I want you to think about that we're working on. Step two, we'll take... Um, you know, about probably four or five of the thumbnails that we like, and we're going to start to develop those into roughs. And then step three is us going to be finalizing those roughs, coming up with tonal studies that are in a finished, you know, uh, finished higher standard of quality and not as rough that are a little bit more refined. Okay? <coughs> All right. So one of the really great examples, an artist that I really like and I thought we'd take a look at, is Feng Zhu. Okay, he, it's funny because I've seen his transition as an artist from some, you know, really old environment sketches and drawings that he's done, and now he's really progressed and he's really doing really fantastic, beautiful work. And it's just a really great, simple, you know, procedure of looking from dark to light. So in every one of these three comps, if you feel like you get stuck in this process, come back and take a look at these three pieces because look at the simple gradients and the transition of dark to light that's happening inside here, okay? Really fantastic approaches. And as we move through the rest of these samples right here, okay, here's another great sample of dark to light. There's lots of information. There's detail in here. If you want to do building structures, that's totally fine. You can get into that type of detail. Just don't over detail something that you don't know how to paint, okay? So we're going to start with painting of mass the approach of basically thinking about mass shapes overlapping other shapes. Then when we get into this, we're going to start to carve out detail and we're going to start to push and pull these shapes back and forward. Now some of you might struggle with the, with the perspective knowledge and the understanding of how something exists in perspective. Once we start to do a rough comp, that's where you either A, go back over and establish the perspective and do an overlay drawing of what's happening, or B, you just keep working and then you start with something very simple. A simple approach to this would be, let me show you an example, would be, for example, tundra or mountain ranges like this, okay? Here's like frozen tundra overlapping each other, receding back in perspective. Okay, this would be a great simple approach if you don't have that perspective ability where you can still establish scale and a visual read inside a piece. Okay, if you're a little bit more inclined and you're a little bit more advanced, you want to start adding in a structure, getting some ships in there. I'll walk you through all this in the next couple of weeks and I'll be doing a ton of demos for you on how I approach this in my own work. Okay, I'll also, thinking about doing a demo about this too, about how to create a real quick, this is Chris Durso, I just came across his stuff. I really like his work here because what's really fantastic to me is just the real simple looseness and the blocking and the shapes. There's not a ton of detail in here, but we get a really quick visual read of what's taking place inside the piece. And that to me is what's extremely important. Here's another sample. It's really easy to block in that type of moon. Okay, we can do that really fast in Photoshop, especially with the right brushes. But then coming back and painting a ship and like hoses and some other elements, we can't even tell in this piece what these hoses are or if that's a space station. We don't know if that's space waste or a space station. That doesn't matter. He's already set up the composition for us to read, and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's lecture a little bit. All that other stuff coming on top of this is detail. What's important is that you could quickly get to this level Okay, of work, and you can only get there by doing some of those basic approaches that I was talking about earlier. Okay, all right, so there's some other great samples up here. <coughs> we'll talk about them a little bit later. So I want to run through and show you guys 
a couple approaches right now on how we're going to work in Photoshop and how we're going to start creating our comps, okay? So <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I have a couple different files created, okay? I made these 11 by 17 files, okay? So I'm going to try to fit about 30 thumbnails on this page. So first thing I'm going to do that I want everyone in this class to do is I want you to fill in the backdrop of your, um, <coughs> excuse me, of your paper here. I want you to fill that in with solid black, okay? So I'm going to come over here right now, and I'm basically going to take in my bucket. Oops. Let's go ahead. Let's fill that solid black. And then basically what I'm going to do is up on top of here, just so I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to make a little square shape. Okay, and that's going to be my first row of thumbnails. So I'm on another layer right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this and um, let's just, I'm going to create a one solid little square. Try to be consistent. Some of you that have had me, like Mr. Kane, and some of you that are a little bit more advanced, if you want to work in a thumbnail that's more in an HD format like this or widescreen format, that's fine, but keep them all consistent, okay? I want them to stay consistent. So if that's what you want, what I want you to do if you're going to keep that thumbnail phase right about there, okay, like that, on a separate layer, now I'm, come, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to switch to white, I'm going to say edit, and I'm going to stroke that really quick with white so I can see it, okay, deselect, or actually, let me just do this, there it is, okay, so now I can move that, that way I know anything that I put in here is going to be the same size, and I'm going to copy that all the way across for my thumbnails, right? So something that I can do really quick is I can come in here as well, zoom in on this piece of paper, and I'm going to start comping out inside that white box, okay? But look at my layers. I'm going to label this now. I'm going to have black down here, B-L-A-C-K, all right? Put that up on the top. Here's my box. I'm going to label this box right now. I'm going to move this up to the top. And now any of the work I do is going to be down on here, okay? If you want to duplicate your boxes, you can. Some people like to do this where they duplicate them and then they have the whole page laid out and see they just pull them over and they have another one there and another one there. I don't like doing that because I don't like seeing the white of the box. It bugs me when I'm working on another study. I just want it to be black around my box. That's a personal preference. I don't like to do that. If you want to work at a smaller size and copy and paste it in, that's just fine. But we're going for a thumbnail, a small size. Okay, <clears throat> now with that said, I'm going to just go back. To, I have my box here. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to zoom in to my piece here. I'm going to get right in here, and I'm just going to start painting. Okay. Now, I have a black background, and I personally like that because now anything that I put down on there is going to sort of shine itself forward. So it's up to you, again, on, on your personal preference. So here's the first approach for you to work. If you want to do simple gradients and overlap a shape, do it, but be very quick with it and don't get caught up into details right now. So here, watch me start, okay? So I'm gonna come over here. I have a couple brushes that I like for blocking in. Okay, I have this little texture brush right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up here, pick the base direction that might be like a highlight area, and I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna drop down to about a 50% spread, and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna lightly sort of work my way forward. And as I'm working here, hold on a minute, that cap lock says on. There it goes. Let me get that off here. Okay. I'm going to start to work, and I just basically start to get a little bit darker as I come forward to my screen. And I'm going to think about a couple mountain shapes that might be in here. And then I'm just going to come in here and start just peppering in some little bits of detail. Okay. So I'm thinking about some mountain shapes. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here. Look, it's all on a separate layer here. That way I can adjust it and modify it really quick. So, um... I'm coming here. Just give me a second. Let me just start painting a little bit. Get a couple mountains there. So I can take that mountain right there that I have. Okay. Um, I can copy paste that. I can bring it back down. I can drop it underneath the previous layer that I have. I might start to drop something in the back like this. And then I quickly, boom, I commit to it. And then if I see that structure in there, I might take some of this lighter value. Okay. And get that in here. Might come across sort of this way like this might have a much wider sky in here. So let me just block it in. I'm doing quick block-ins right now. I don't want to get into too much detail. I'm just thinking of quick, simple shapes, okay? <clears throat> I might decide for scale. I want to have some more shapes overlapping. So I like to work like this, where I always like to block something in first, and I just do it really rough. So 
I start with just simple values like this, and I sort of just get some other values going across. I don't know necessarily where I'm going. I just block something in. Then I like to come in with my lasso tool and start defining stuff a little bit more. So I might say, hey, what if right in here I have this tall sort of mountainous structure that's right in here, and then I have that structure repeated, and then I have it right there. Okay, so now I could come in with my brush that I have that, those areas selected and see I can come along and brush some of that in a little bit more. And then if it's lights coming across, I pick a direction of light and then I might come in here and drop down about 30 and say, hey, this is getting hit with a little bit of light that's hitting a little bit on the inside there. Okay, that's done. Deselect. Boom. Then I come over and I might start to darken a little bit more. Say, okay, I want to darken a little bit of the space here. Get that to be a little bit darker. Get this to pop out a little bit more. Keep adjusting. Keep working in there. Okay. And now as I recede back, it's going to start to get lighter. Okay. So if I get back in here and I do my mountain shapes again and do another little piece in here, say I add something like that in right here. Okay. That's going to be a lot lighter. It's not going to be the same dark value that I have up here. So now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to work with some of these other values that are up in here. I might take a little bit of the white start to block this in a little bit, a little bit of highlights on the top, drop this down to about 20 to start to brush in some little variants here. <coughs> Hit control H if you like, if you want to have a better idea of how your work's starting to come about. Okay, there it go, starting to develop a little bit more. Okay, <coughs> maybe back here I might decide to have more of like a mountain range feel. So I'm going to select this as sky right there. And I'm going to hit H, come in with my brush, and take this soft brush here, get a little bit more softer white. I'm going to come in here and see by me painting over that right there to see what's happening. Okay. So if I hit Control H, look at my ants. So you see my ants in there? So by me now defining that a little bit more, deselect, go back to lasso. Lasso is your friend in all this. It makes it really expediated for you to get in here and do some of this, okay? Control H, go back to brush. Start to pull some of that out, okay? That's it. Right there I have one composition. Now to wrap it up, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my box really quick and I'm going to delete the overspray that I have. I don't want to get any more defined than that right there, okay? And if I come over here and I turn off my box, there's my first comp right there. I always do a quick comp and then I go back and do the next comp and I keep moving along. So as I keep doing my comps right now, I have some cool mountain structures in there. I like to go to the next comp because then I try to do something a little bit different, okay? In this comp, I have a lot of vertical structures in there. So what happens if I do the next comp over, but I change the composition and then add on to it a little bit and make it a little bit more defined. So let me do that really quick for you, right? Look, I'm going to take that box now. I'm going to move that, oops, I'm going to move my box directly across. I'm going to put it right here, right next to it. Okay. And I'm actually going to cheat right now. That's okay. I'm going to take part of what's in here. <coughs> I'm going to copy and paste that. I'm going to bring it over right here, but now I'm going to turn it this way a little bit. And I'm a huge believer in going for something that you didn't have before. Okay, so you see what I just did there? Now I'm going to come back and delete the overspray that I have. And then I'm going to finish out that composition now. Okay, roughing it in. Get a couple of the brushes. There's a couple of brushes that I really like that are just, just sort of these rough sort of texture brushes. Try to get a little bit, oops, a little bit wider up on the top here. <coughs> get that to sort of fade down. Now the one thing I didn't show you guys that I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you in just a couple minutes here, is I'm going to give you these really nice set of smudge brushes that have been handed around. Okay, oops, let's do that again. I was going to define this. I like that foreground element of this jagged cliff coming in like this. So now I'm going to take that and take my brush in here and I'm going to define part of this up a little bit darker. And then I'm going to decide maybe lights coming 
from an angle like this. So I'm going to have dark maybe on the tops a little bit like that. So it's a little bit darker in the foreground, let's say. Hit Control H. Now I could come in here and take a couple, little bit of white. And then I'm going to come along some of the edges here and get that to pop out a little bit. Just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to come back in here and I was thinking, hey, what it could be really cool if I had a walkway that came through here. Maybe back in here I have like sort of this mountain range or something that's like this. Actually, now let's try going opposite. What if I have that? <coughs> Control H again. So you see how I got that mountain range in there real quick? Just by using my lasso tool. And then I can select some areas of dark and light. I can put a little bit darker values on a couple little parts of it. Okay, now I was thinking about having a trail or walkway through there. Okay, so now I could come over here and I can select part of this wider value. And then I'm going to come over here and sort of, um, by the way, if you hear me clicking on my keys, I'm constantly changing. So look, I'm going to have that trail start up in here in the foreground. I'm going to have it sort of come through here, wrap up, go over this. And then now I decided, hey, that looks pretty cool having that little walkway in there. All right, let me I want to add a little bit lighter value in there too. Up here in the sky a little. Okay. <coughs> and then I thought if I get back in here, maybe I have that trail go up some type of, maybe there's some type of cool mountain structure in the back here. Okay, like this. I'm going to hit Control H. I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to get in here. There. See how I got that structure in there? And now I'm just going to go over it a couple passes like this. Keep it a little bit lighter. And now I'm going to deselect. Let's go back to my brush. I'm going to take that brighter white color. And where it starts here, it starts to transition. Maybe part of that trail gets up in here. And I see it do this. What percentage am I at? There we go. I see that sort of go up here a little bit. Maybe it comes up around part of that corner, and maybe it works its way a little bit up here. Okay. They might decide to come in here. Um, okay, I'll just paint it with the same brush. I'm going to just throw a couple quick clouds. Go a little bit more wider there. That's it. That's one composition. Okay. I'm going to clean it up really quick and take my marquee. Boom. I'm going to delete all this. Okay. There. All right. <laughs> That's one composition. You see how I created that from the other, the first composition? I just cheated. I rotated it. I turned it really quick. And I saw another patterning of rocks. And now I really sort of like this idea of this rocky planet and this road that's zigzagging through there. And I just created a whole other thumbnail. Okay, so that's one basic approach of you creating thumbnails on your own. Okay, here's another approach that a buddy of mine showed me that I really like. So look at my box now. If I come back over here. I can come over, I can take my box, I'm going to move my box over like this, oops, and I can do another thumbnail right here, so I'm ready to go. Now let me show you something that a buddy of mine showed me that is similar to this, but it's working with the possibility of just natural interactions. You know what that means? Happy accidents, natural interaction, just something that's on a canvas that you didn't have to think about. I like doing this all the time. One of the a really great technique that I really love is tracing paper with a black Prismacolor because I can just put down values down there and I can move my little camera lens around and I could find things I never thought existed before and develop really cool compositions with them, okay? Let me show you how I do that really quick here, okay? <clears throat> so watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to quickly take my box here, select all, copy. I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, you can't see it right now, but if I go to levels, and if I adjust my levels, oops, wrong way. There, there's my little black box. So I copied and pasted it, and I have this black box right here. You see that? 
Now what I did really quick is I just took a piece of paper and I stroked a bunch of brushes across it and a bunch of lines and stuff. There's nothing there of any value to me, is there? Okay. What I'm going to do is you see my little frame here? I'm going to take my little frame and I'm going to zoom into a little part of this. Okay. Now I should have had some more organics. I'm going to zoom in like right in here, right there. Okay. I'm going to drag, <coughs> come back <coughs> over the layer that you have selected. And I'm going to drag my marquee right over that little area right there. See that? I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back to my other piece here and look at this. Boom. Look at that little composition right there. I'm going to turn that into a composition now. What I see right there is a big giant tree in the foreground with a character that might be standing on it and a mountain range in the back. You see how I did that? <clears throat> Not to sound like a crazy person, but that's a great way to create really fast compositions. So here, let me go into this really quick right now. Let me move my box up. Okay. I can turn my box off. Now I'm going to work on this. Let me, I'm going to drop all these layers into one right now. <coughs> okay, so watch. I'm going to zoom into this guy here, and now I can work on it. I have something I never thought of before. I never thought that, hey, um, I could come in here, and I could have, let me see if I can get some mountains out of these. So if I have some, like, light structures in here, that's too dark. So now I'm going to paint that down a little bit like this. But I do like this. I like the dark values in here coming through. So maybe I have like vines, maybe another part of a tree element that's coming through. Maybe I actually need to take off a little bit more of this. Maybe that's a little too thick right in there. Sort of knock that back a little bit. And then I might decide like, hey, I want to come back in here and have some mountain ranges that are in the back there. So I might have one right there. Let's hit H. I'm going to do a lighter value. Come in with my brush here. Go down and start with like a 30%. I'm just going to sort of drag across get that to drop back a little bit, okay? And come back with my lasso again and sort of hit another area in here like this, all right? Come back with my brush and start to define that out. There's a little bit too much, there's a dark value in the back here I'm not liking, so I'm gonna get rid of that in a minute. I'm gonna hit a little bit of my mountain ranges there. A little bit darker value on the base, let's say, like this. Okay, if you select, I need to push back part of this right here. So I'm just going to lightly come in with my brush. That's way too dark back there. Why? Because atmospheric perspective, right? I'm going to grab that value and just sort of paint that across in here. Highlights up on there. Let's see if I can define that back mountain that I was thinking about in the back there a little bit more. Actually, you know what? I'm just I'm repeating shapes. I want to overlap this with another shape. So part of me just thought about coming in here like this and doing something and making like a leaf structure <coughs> in the front here. Oops. I'm just going to connect this like it's all part of a plant. That sort of connected in there. All right. Now I need to define something back here a little bit more, so I, I want to really lighten this up. So I'm just going to come in here and just quickly just sort of paint on top of this. Now, the tools I was going to show you, that I'm going to use right now. These are really fantastic. I'm going to give you a set. They're online. I got them from uh, a couple students. And I keep finding them online. People have them going around. They're really fantastic smudge brush tools. So in Photoshop, we have the ability to smudge. Okay. So if I come over here and I grab the blur, we have the sharpen, we have the smudge tool. If you click the smudge tool, okay, and you come up here under the smudge icon, okay. 
and you drop and you go to that little gearbox and hit that gearbox and tell it to load the smudge tools, the smudge tools work really fran fantastic. So look, I have some of them in here right now. Uh, smudge nice, they're all really fantastic. They all have different effects. Okay, so watch, you're gonna go to smudge nice right now and you see back in here, I can quickly go over this and I can get all kinds of really light blend techniques happening where I could start to blend in part of what I had in here. Very quickly, see that? Then I can come back into this thumbnail again and I can work on it. Okay, I can keep developing it. <coughs> I can go back over here and I can decide like, hey, I like those, that structure I was getting. Let me smudge some of these together. Maybe the, ha the background's a little hazy. Okay, whatever approach you want to take into your piece here, okay, the smudge tools are fantastic because they basically allow me to go in, look at that, and I get like really instant soft edges. Now, that's just smudge nice. If I come back here, go back to smudge and I come up, there's different blends. I have one called add water, okay, there's a Bristol blend straight. So look at what this one does. If I come over here, it sort of puts a scratchy technique on that. You see that? It makes it look like that's jungle <coughs> elements. See that little plant I put up there? I can scratch a little bit around it and it smears it around and makes it look like it's sort of dirty and whatnot. So the smudge options to be able to come into your piece really quick, and they actually don't kill up too much of your memory, but they work really fantastic and they allow you to get a, a, a little bit lighter into some of your composition. So on this composition that I was mocking up really quick, I was wanting to get the sky to blend together a little bit more. And now that I have that sky, blend together, I'm going to come in here and let's do some mountains in a, in a back sky with some light coming across. So to do the back sky, I'm going to just going to come in here and I'm going to select around like this that I might imagine would be the sky area, just like that. And now with my selection tool, I'm going to deselect the areas of the brushes uh, here in the front. You see that? Excuse me, the I can't talk. Of the shrubbery and the trees right here. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm taking that out of the selection. Now that that's out of the selection, I can come in here, go to Control H. I can go to my brush. Um, <coughs> let's take the same brush I've been working on. I'm going to go to more of a white here, and I'm going to try to create a real nice, cool sort of atmospheric feel around my mountains. Ready? Here's the best part. Watch the magic happen. See that? Ooh. Because I have that little selection over there, right? Because of that, now the mountains sort of pop out a little bit. And then if I like what I have there, I still look at my selection, Control H. Selection is key in this. So I still have my selection set up there. So now I could come back over here and I could go back to smudge again. So I have a hotkey for smudge. Okay, oops, I accidentally hit crop. Hold on a minute. Maybe Command Z and go back. All right, I'm go back a couple steps there. <coughs> All right, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, let me hit Control H. There, I still have my selection there. Um, I hit C by my smudge tool. No, it's not stamp. What was my hotkey? Sorry, guys, I put a hotkey in. Oh, there it is. It's H. No, that's my hand. My hotkeys change on this machine then from home. That's why I don't have a hotkey in here yet. But at home, I have a hotkey for my smudge tool. So when I'm working, I could quickly come in. Like, let's say I want to have like sort of a rainy. What's cool about them is I could just go over and you just create all kinds of variations in your thumbnails. It's a great way to blend. Look at that. It's sort of like a scratchy feel, like maybe it's rainy out there. It doesn't matter. It's just a quick thumbnail pass, right? There, I'm done with that one. So I'm going to clean it up now. I'm going to take my marquee. I'm going to select around it. Delete. Delete. Hold on a minute. Sorry. I want to turn my box on to make sure I'm not deleting anything next to it. Delete. Delete, there we go. One more down here. You select, okay? So look, there's three thumbnails right there. <coughs> All right? I haven't gone into those yet and put scale. I do. I like to do that a little bit later. It depends what flow I'm in. It's, it's sort of a, to me, it's a pain in the butt when I lecture, when I'm at home and it's quiet and I have good music on and I get in the mode. I get a lot better work then when I'm here and I'm lecturing and I'm sort of talking. But these are my thumbnail passes. Those are three real quick, okay? I can easily take some of these now and, and, and change them. So watch what I'm gonna do really fast. This is, I'm gonna go back to that original piece here. 
Remember this? I'm going to take that now and I'm going to move around that little box that I have. And I might find something else in here that looks totally different. In fact, what I might do is just to step it up a notch. What if I take this and I transform it and I do this? Okay. Give me a second. Let me squash them together to make the detail even tighter. And now, just to be a super pain in the butt, I'm going to come back over to smudge, go to smudge tool. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to put it on. <coughs> um, let's do hard dapple. I haven't done that one yet. Okay, I'm just going to drag this across a couple times here. it is and now hold on it's still smudging wow that did a lot uh oh hope we don't get a crash here <clears throat> so now what I'm gonna do <coughs> is move my little box over and find a new part of that I sort of like that feel it's like that real dusty feel here right here let me go over that again right over here on this side let's go back to the smudge again here, let me just hit this with a little bit darker. Usually I don't paint into it at all. But I just sort of like that idea right there. So I'm just going to take that and copy it. And now it's much smaller. We can't really see any detail in it. But if I copy that right now, oops, copy that, come back to my master thumbnail page right here, all right? And let's paste it, put it right there. That's another comp I'm going to work on. Here, I'm going to do it. Let's just do a whole row really fast, OK? Here I did another page right here of some rough passes with drawings. I don't know where I'm necessarily going. Okay. Let me take that box and I'm just going to put it over something like right over here, like that. Okay, marker. Take the marquee. Here, copy that. Come back here. Boom. Uh oh. What happened? Hold on a minute. I didn't copy it. Yeah, that's what happened. My bad. One second. Let's try that again. Copy. Here we go. Paste. <clears throat> Why am I just getting the... Hold on a second, guys. I did something wrong. I don't know what I did. Let me come back here. Oh, I know what I did. I don't have that merged on white paper. That's my bad. Let me fill this real quick. I know I darkened it, but I don't care right now. That's fine. Here, take my marquee. Let me select that little area right there. There we go. Copy that. Come back here. Paste it in. See, that's a whole nother composition for me. I'm looking at that, and I have like a mountain in the back. I could have a tree here in the front. There could be somebody standing on this cliffside. Could be another tall mountain. I don't know what it is right now. It's sort of what I call like a happy accident. I just put those in there, and then when I get in and I start painting on them, I start to find a composition. Okay? So I wanted to give you sort of both approaches because, you know, by using this happy sort of experimental, experimental method, Sometimes you can come up with something that you never thought of. Let me turn it this way. Scott Robertson had a great demo on this where he does this with markers, but he has like a blurry marker comp, and he just zooms in and takes a sample of it. And I didn't get this from Scott. I actually got this from a friend of mine in grad school who does this with lines. He draws a series of lines all over the place. But then he comes in and he does this. He does positive and negative shape. And I thought this was a great idea, is he comes in with like a, I have this tool, it's like an eraser for me. And then he comes in like this really lightly. And he just sort of draws like light lines, like this. And see, now he's creating, so my, uh, this guy at school, when he does this, I thought that was a really neat idea because he's coming up 
with little miniature compositions. So when you grab that box and you start to move that box around, like right here, you might get something that you never ever thought of. Let's just take it from right there. Okay, so let me take my marquee, let's drag over that. Okay, copy that and let's come back to my main page here, paste. See, it looks totally different when it's not around its surrounding, right? I mean, it totally does. And then look, if I wanted to, if you actually, here, let's do this. I'm going to paste again. This time I'm going to take it. I'm going to transfer it. I'm going to rotate it like this. I'm going to squash it downward, up. Let's see if I get two totally different compositions this way. Okay, <laughs> so my next step now that I have those in there is to go in there and define them a little bit more. And part of that definition is going to be overlapping a shape, okay, uh, uh, variation of shape, having some indication of scale, and just keep doing this. And if I keep moving along this process and I stop at 40 and I look back, I'm going to have three or four that really work for me. Then we're going to blow those up and we're going to develop them a little bit more. I'm going to turn them into roughs, okay. So... I don't want to get too much. There's a little bit more I could get into. I'll mention it really quick. But I didn't want to get into really into too much shape language or talking about motif or protagonist, antagonist. I don't want to get into all that right now. I want you to just use your mind and just explore and come up with some variations of shape. I've already done two here that I really like. And I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to stop the recorder for a minute. And then I'll paint for a little bit to save time. And then I'll show you the next three that I came up with and how I got there and why I developed those, okay? So I'll take a break for just a second here. Pause the recorder. Okay, so I just went back into this one really quick, and I just added, I smudged it a little bit, and I got that sort of composition there, and I like what's happening, okay? This is what we're going to do. What I want you guys to start working on is just experiment with the shapes here. I'm going to experiment more with these at home, and I'll do, try to do another demo for you. And then we'll go from here because what we're going to do is in the next class, I want us to really just talk about now setting and scale, pushing light, establishing some direction, um, you know, get a castle or a ship in there, get it comped out. And then we can take that and blow up and that's where we can really start getting some nice detail in there. But for the most part, everything we talked about today is just the beginning phase of thinking about shapes, adjustment of shapes, overlap, happy accidents, getting it put together and start to develop your composition. Okay? All right, you're free to go, and I'll try to email you those brush smudges. Okay?